Now we look at another oligopoly market with the Corneau. And we have a few assumptions. We're going to have two firms selling homogeneous goods. There's no entry to market. Okay. We're going to have a market demand of P equals A minus BQ. So it's actually the inverse demand function. Where Q equals Q1 plus Q2. So we're going to do just a duopoly with two firms. And uh, we have a constant marginal cost of C for both firms. And firm one believes firm two will sell quantity two and chooses its output quantity one. Okay, so we're looking for best response functions in order to get the Nash equilibrium quantity and price. We are going to show how this will end up being the market quantity. This will be the price. This will be an individual firm's quantity and they're both the same. And this will be an individual profit for each firm. And they're both the same. As firm one, we want to maximize our profit. So we're looking for firm one's revenue, less their costs, and that would give us profit. And then we're going to end up taking the partial derivative of the profit with respect to quantity one and setting that equal to zero to get the maximum profit point. Okay, so we have the inverse demand function A minus BQ, and we're going to replace that big Q with Q1 plus Q2, which it equals. We'll expand that out. So now when we go and get our profit, we know profit equals revenue, which is price times our quantity sold, as firm one, minus our cost, which we're gonna have as marginal cost times quantity one. And then we can substitute in this equation for price. Okay, I'm just going to expand that before I take the derivative. Okay, so now taking the derivative of that, and it's actually the partial derivative because we have more than one variable in our equation. So we're just doing with it uh, with respect to quantity one and then we're going to set that equal to zero. So taking the derivative of AQ1 minus BQ1 squared minus BQ2Q1 minus CQ1, that was our profit from before. So taking the derivative, we get A minus 2BQ1 minus BQ2, because that's sitting in front of a Q1, minus C. And we're going to set that equal to zero. And we want to isolate for Q1. So we're gonna put that to the other side. And uh, I'm just gonna put all this still down. So now to isolate Q1, we have to divide by 2B. And we want to just rewrite this so that Q2 is isolated on its own there. So we'll write A minus C over 2B here. And then we'll have minus B Q2 over 2B. And then we'll see that those Bs cancel. So our final solution here is A minus C over 2B minus 1 half Q2. Okay. Similarly, we can say that Q2 equals A minus C over 2B minus 1 half Q1. Okay, and our equilibrium is where quantity 1 equals quantity 2. So we can just take our expression for Q1. And instead of putting in Q2, we're just going to put in Q1 because we know that they're going to be equal and then we can solve this equation. So we'll bring over the 1 half Q1 to the left hand side. Okay, 
So we have three halves, Q1 equals A minus C over 2B. To get rid of this, we'll multiply by 2 thirds on both sides. Twos cancel over here, and we're left with Q1 equals A minus C over 3B. And that also equals Q2. Okay. And then we know the market quantity is equal to Q1 plus Q2. And since they're equal, we can just take one of those individual quantities and multiply it by two. So we're just gonna put two times A minus C over three B. Okay, so we're going to take our inverse demand function and substitute in that quantity that we have for the market. Okay, we can notice that the B's cancel which simplifies things. So we'll just rewrite this as A minus two A minus C, and this part is still over three. Now we want the entire expression over three, so we're gonna put three A minus two A minus C. So now we have three A and we're gonna expand this out, so minus two A plus two C all over three. And that gives us P equals A plus 2C over 3 as our equilibrium price. And then the last step is just to get the profit. So we're going to say an individual profit for firm 1 or firm 2 is equal to our price minus our marginal cost times our quantity. Because that's the same as price times quantity, which is revenue, minus C times quantity, which is our cost. Okay, and so now we can substitute in the expression we have for P into this equation. So we'll have A plus 2C over 3 minus D all times Q1. Okay, let's simplify inside the bracket here. So we have A plus 2C and we'll say minus 3C so that now the entire expression is over 3 times Q1. Simplify that, we have A minus C over three times Q1, and Q1 we can substitute in now. So we have A minus C over three B for Q1. So we can see it's A minus C squared over nine B.